what's up ATI welcome back to the ecosystem <laughs> it's the car shipping business channel you know my name is Jay we're live it's Tuesday night all right here we go you know my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation to you wherever you are because your automotive business deserves the latest in transportation news and if you're busy and i know you are in a minute i'm going to give the welcome show lineup you're going to know what to expect you're going to see clickable time code links in the video description below that's in about a day or so and then you'll be able to skip ahead do me a favor please remember to comment like share subscribe and thanks for watching ati good fast cheap I've sat where you're sitting, I've seen discussions where business professionals bring up transportation. I've seen expectations go unchecked, and I didn't like it either. So we're fixing it. That's what ATI stands for, Real Transportation Talk. So when I hear good, fast, cheap, no, stop it. Not with something as expensive as a fleet of cars. It's your inventory. It's your product. It's your livelihood. This isn't Amazon Prime overnight. But visibility of tracking, yes, let's talk about it. Along with pricing options where nobody takes a bath, except for the good, fast, cheap, easy clients. Managing auto transport operations. That's tonight's show. Featuring Joe Bercari of Midwestern Car Care. Dana Rogers of Pre-Owned Auto Logistics, John Robertson of Ship Your Car Now, and Ken Garbez of Location Services, plus Ty Thompson of Cars on the Move. It's going to be a great show, so please join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on ATI. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. joining us in the community on a Tuesday night uh, and a blustery. We're going into Groundhog's Day blustery. So um, I don't even know if there's going to be an empty spot where the groundhog can pop his head up. But it is Tuesday Night's Live. Thank you guys so much. Here, let's do this. I want you to feel welcome. Please do feel welcome. This is ATI. This is a safe space. This is where all the verticals can come together and get real and talk and share information, whether you're looking for equipment or you're looking for a dispatcher, maybe you're a broker and you want to promote your business, software, etc. It's all on the table. Please do say hello in the live chat. And, uh, and you don't have to say hello. You don't have to say anything. You know this. You don't have to do anything. Just put it on cruise control and stay with us because at the quarter hour, we're going to go into industry news, uh, there's so much stuff, and in fact, there's a big EV. I see in the something about Trudeau. We'll go to the live chat in a minute. But if you want to talk about EV, it's in industry news. And if you don't want to talk about EV, it's in industry news. 
Uh, Ty's going to join us in about 40 minutes and help me introduce our guest tonight. We're going to start with Joe Burkari of Midwestern Car Carriers, and we're going to give each of these business professionals a spotlight to talk, to share, before we open the panel. Second up, we got Dana Rogers, pre-owned auto logistics. After Dana, John Robertson of Ship Your Car Now. And after John, we've got Ken Garbez of Location Services. And then we'll bring everybody back for a panel in about 90 minutes. And then we'll go to, I was going to say 10 o'clock. Used to be that. We might go to 10, but we're going to go to at least 9 Central, 9.15, 9.20. Um, that's what we're going to do. So I'll tell you what, do me a favor. Um, you, can, you can help me out. Please do. Leave a like. Thank you so much. We're live. If you haven't figured that out yet, like this is live, we're live, anything can happen. So please give me a like. I appreciate that so much. Um, and if you're so inclined, you can click share, you can click copy, you can grab that YouTube link. Well, shoot, there he is. There's Mark. Hey! What's up, Mark Grodicky? Superflow Systems from Cincinnati, supporting our Cincinnati Bagels. Big win on Sunday. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'm in Kansas City, man. That was rough, dude. And I never... When do I talk about sports? But that was rough. But congratulations. Yes, congratulations to the Bengals. Absolutely. It's a safe place. Everybody's welcome here. Thank you, Mark, so much for the super chat, the contribution, and for Superflow Systems. And you can uh, go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up. Become an ATI Insider. Are you looking for advice on how to grow your business? Whether you're a carrier, your driver, your broker, you're not sure. You're not sure what you are. You just know that somebody said, man, I got I to gotta move some vehicles. You can go to autotransportintel.com. We'll help you out. We'll put you in touch with Ty. And I'll tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm late for the live chat. So right after this, uh, we're going to go into the live chat. Stick around. I want to say hello to you. The ACB transportation team is always looking to expand our network to safe and reliable carriers. As an ACV carrier, there are many perks that allow us to become one of the fastest growing carrier partners in the nation. ACV carriers have access to our job board with thousands of new jobs listed every day. You do not need to pay for access, and every job listed is exclusive to our carrier partners. Interested in a job? While you stage a job on the job board, no other carriers have visibility to that job for 15 minutes, giving you the time to make the best decisions for your business. Get paid within one to two business days. Our jobs are exclusively dealer to dealer, which means no more walking in large auction lots to find the vehicle you're looking for. Be one of the thousands of carriers who grew their business in partnership with ACV. Dealer transportation, peace of mind, carriers pick up, deliver, and get paid on time. Join the nationwide network at acvauctions.com forward slash ATI and sign up with Carrier by ACV Transportation. Did you hear the, the tight horn section on that? And the, like a wow, wow. I love that, man. Love that. Great audio. Links are in the live chat. Let's go into the live chat. Um, let's back this up to the top. John Cochran's in here first. What's up, John? Carrier on the move. Uh, speaking of cars on the move, I love this channel. Everyone in it. Yeah, Ty. Me too, man. Uh, ditto. Well said. Right there with you, buddy. Oh, in fact, did you just, you just super chatted. Oh. Thank you so much, Ty. Cars on the move. ATI is on the move. And we can, you know, this channel can always use your help. So we appreciate the super chats coming through. Thank you so much. What a great way to contribute. But we understand, you know, uh, I've seen the collection plate go around and around. So thank you so much for all the times that you participate and support. It means so much. Uh, Vistaga's here. What's up, Vistaga? Hello, buddy. And Will Morris is here. Happy Tuesday. What's up, Will Morris Car Auction Coach? Uh, the beloved car auction coach, I might add. Kimberly's here. What's up, Tuesday Night's Live? We're glad you connect. Thank you so much. Please ask a question. Join the community. 
We do want that. Silver Mint. Adding some color. Thank you so much, Silver Mint. Danny B says hello. Seaport Service. Candy Jacksonville. Going to be on the show Friday and here on a Tuesday. You can check in multiple times a week. We love that. Um, and Don, hey Don, check this out. Um, new recruiter for Midwestern Car Carriers, Don. Uh, hey, you know what, Don? You know what we're going to do? This just happened today. Uh, February 15th, Tuesday night, that's two weeks from tonight, opened up. We're going to do a jobs show. So uh, anyone that is hiring or looking or it has to do with jobs, recruiting, in auto transport, let me know. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And um, we'll see if we can add you to the show. Or at least, um, you know, send in your, uh, your recruiting information, your article, your LinkedIn post, your social media. Two weeks from today, jobs show. You heard it here first. So that'll be cool. Because we know there's a lot going on. In jobs and hiring and auto transport. Brokers, carriers, dispatchers, software. Uh, Super Dispatch liked the game. Yeah, sad for the Chiefs in KC. But they had an amazing run. Yeah. What's up, Super Dispatch? I know. It's tough to talk about. We'll just keep moving. Seaport service. Look at look at Candy throwing down on the community. We got Jay, Mark, Carlos, Ron, John, Kimberly, Sue, Silverman, Chris Chamberlain, ACV, the music. We got Beck. We got Team Super Dispatch, right? <laughs> you're over the you're over the microphone. The music's playing, and they're they're kicking you off stage. You're like, but good one. You shared it. Thank you, Candy. We're gonna talk about the numbers again, just for a minute. That's up in the uh, industry news stuffage. Sky Hallman's here. What's up, Sky? Um, good evening to you. And and also, um, when I see this like on LinkedIn and the shares, oh, thank you for sharing it on LinkedIn. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, Don, great. Send me an email. Send it in, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I want those articles, make it in industry news, jobs in auto transport, February 15th. Ken Garbez, good evening. What's up? Ken is on the show tonight. Ken is in the live chat. DNW Logistics says hello. What's up, DNW? Yeah, this is cool up in here. So, all right, man, that's awesome. So, what we'll do is I got a lot of industry news. We'll go ahead and jump to that. Look, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Cart USA loves ATI. That's a chant. Um, thank you, Hendrick. Hendrick Sar Cart Group. Cartgroup.com, and in fact, Cart Group is in industry news, so we'll share the link in there. Uh, but thank you, Hendrick, so much. Now, Hendrick, Hendrick is um, uh, he's he, more of a visible. Not he's not a new member. He's an oldie but a goodie. But he's more visible now than ever before. He's he's riding around with uh, Ty. I think they're making TikToks and Instagrams and whatnot. Anyways. Thank you, Hendrix, so much. Really do appreciate that, buddy. Um, all right. Yep, the cart S4. Are you looking for a trailer? The S4 is what you're looking for. Find out more about it. Do this. Stick around because right after this, we're going into industry news, and you're not going to want to miss it. Transport Auto Quoter is by far the leading auto quoting software on the market and the only auto quoter with a pro version that comes preset with accurate pricing for anywhere in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it. The best part is that no change with your current software is needed. Just plug TAQ in and start booking jobs. Carriers can easily plug TAQ into their current websites and start making money right away. I bet you're wondering how we do this instantly and accurately 24-7. Well, constant analytics is the key. Our price watch team is constantly monitoring current market conditions, paying close attention to seasonal and quick-moving industry changes. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and data to maintain good pricing, time that most of us just don't have on a daily basis. So free yourself up. Using TAQ Pro is really a no-brainer. Save time and money, maximizing your leads and optimizing your online investments. You'll finally be able to sleep well at night knowing that TAQ is on the job selling for you 24-7. Never missing a potential job.
So you need an auto shipping quote and a broker software you can trust. Provide instant, accurate quotes online with Transport Auto Quoter by Superflow Systems and move with Pro ABD CRM. Visit superflowsystems.com. Links in the live chat. On the podcast? All right. Not on the podcast? Follow the podcast. Here's a link to that in the live chat. Sweet. Um, yes, let's go in industry news. Let's do that. Thank you very much. This is show number 227 in a row on a Tuesday night. Managing auto transport operations is the show. This is, this is pretty cool. This is the fleet show we've been working towards for two years. And it's not the end all be all, but we're reaching now. We're in that. Man, we're in the zone. Speaking of the zone. Thank you, Super Dispatch. ATI, where the industry comes to learn, exchange knowledge, share information. Thanks from all of us at Super Dispatch. Here's to the future of auto transport. Thank you, Super Dispatch. Uh, can you feel it? The, you are witnessing the future of auto transport live on ATI. So thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. It's, it is super cool. Um, and so here we are. Yep. 227. Yep. The fleet, the trucks lined up. What goes into it? What? You move a car, you load a car, you hit a button, but a bing, but a boom. Ah, uh, well. All right. Yeah, there's that unicorn. Oh, you're the unicorn? Well, cool. Well, then we're glad you made it to the show. Because you can get good, you can get fast, you can cheat, get cheap. But if you get all three, you are a unicorn. Um, you know, we talk about the industry as an ecosystem, right? All the way from OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, characters, char characters, I said characters, uh, carriers, equipment, regulations, and loads. Well, so tonight's show, it's mostly about carriers, equipment, loads, and then I had to include regulations because for carriers, it's a, it's a big part of it. Um, providing a service, and there are brokers here too. Asset light, asset medium, on behalf of the shippers. So that's kind of how I put the diagram together, because you can see on the, on the left side, you got the shippers, and on the right side, you got the workers. And in the middle, you got the services. Oh, there's, look at that little unicorn that Ty found. How cool is that? Uh, you know, on ATI, we've got back of the store, front of the store, back of the store, transport parking lot, front of the store, where they have the expectations. I figured it out. It is, it's 2022. It is the year of adaptation. Whatever you are doing, get the tools out because you're probably, it's not the beginning of your adaptation, but you are certainly in the middle of a continuation of your adaptation. Uh, when the auction is a packed house, you'll find Ty having hot dogs in lane 8. That's the online networking that we are building here in this community. And it's no joke, man. He goes to the shows. Thank you, Ty, for going to the shows, checking in with all the partners, Saying hello, getting the live interviews, uh, checking in on the discussions. What are they talking about? What are they listening to? Why are they listening to it? Where did you get that idea? Um, and that's why we love talking about the trade shows. We are always talking about trade shows, whether live or on demand. You can see the word salad. Um, okay, you know, uh, did you see, if you missed this show, I just want to mention, you got to check out this show and definitely do this. When you go watch, when you go watch Auto Transport Load Boards 2022, um, when you go watch that, I'll do, I'll do you a favor. You can go ahead and click down in the video description. Here, here's the link. Top 12 show. And there's the link. It's in the live chat. And when you, when you click on that link, you'll see in here in a second. Click on the link, go watch the show, go in the video description, skip ahead. And then you'll realize, wait, I want to go back. But anyways, get the uh, get the information on the top 12 load boards. Pretty, pretty interesting. 
Uh, carriers on the move. We have two carriers on the move tonight. LAI Auto Transport, still a carrier on the move. And if you tuned in on Dispatching Live, you would see why he has that ambulance. Want to know why? Go back and watch Dispatching Live. That was Thursday's show. Um, and also, here's Fast Eddie Transport killing it with uh, with a single car trailer. You want to know more about Fast Eddie's business with a single car trailer? Tune in on Friday's show. Jeez, Jay, where do you, where do I get all these links and shows? Well, you go to the Auto Transport Intel YouTube homepage. Speaking of driving a wedge, Nissan looking at alternative equipment. This was in Automotive Logistics. This was talked about at the Finnish Vehicle Logistics show. That's right. Automakers talking about driving a wedge, including wedge trailers that have a capacity typically three vehicles, etc., can be pulled on a conventional pickup. Can be. Can be. Uh, you may think moving three vehicles, you're not reaching your full potential, but the reality is there's so many complex locations, congestion, etc., by adopting this new equipment, we're getting there rapidly. That's right. Trailers of all sizes. So check it out. Here's the S4. This is the Cart Group S4. You like that trailer? All right. You want to see more? Okay. Go to cartgroup.com. I know it's kind of small there. Here. Can you see? Cartgroup.com and learn more about the different trailers Cart Group has to offer. And Hendrick, he's in the live chat. Say hello, ask a question. Uh, you need to sell more trucks. We sold them all. You need to sell more before you get more. You don't have any trucks to sell. You get more when you sell more. <laughs> I don't know why I shared it. Uh, but at Akron Auto Auction, I like this. Show me your lanes, man. Show me your lanes, man. I uh, love this. Get the lanes, get the times, who's in them. I want more of this, man. Show me your lanes. And thank you, truckers. Don't see this often enough. Actually, I don't know if I ever see that. But um, And it's not required, but I love this. Thank you, truckers. Yes. Yes, trucker appreciation. I'm down with that. Um, hey, here's a story. Shipping companies giving maritime workers bonuses worth as much as triple their annual salary. Want to be out at sea? Major shipping companies offering workers bonuses worth as much as three years' salary. Uh, Costco Shipping, a Chinese state-owned company, giving workers year-end bonuses of 30 times the salary. Evergreen. Remember Ever Given? How could you not remember Ever Given? Uh, Evergreen handing out bonuses as high as 40 times. Point here? Makes you think, doesn't it? Where Where is this headed, Jay? Um, uh, oh, I saw this too. This is interesting. Ford and ADT announced Canopy. Ring-like security for you, you and your truck. Check this out. Think of it as a joint venture as Ring for Cars to strengthen automotive security with AI... And on the owner's app, keep your vehicles and what's inside of it safe. Canopy, dude. You know what I'm saying? Mike, check. One, two, three. How are we doing? We're okay? All right, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Attention all shippers, Michelle Hutchinson says. Watch that storm. You know it's coming in. And this is uh, really for right for the shippers. Listen, there's a storm coming. He didn't just pick it up. He's not running it ASAP. At 7 p.m. EST in the middle of a storm. I mean, he might, but, you know, that's up to him. And uh, and Michelle, she was with us for holiday transport prep in December. She will be back for a new shipper toolkit. That's next month. That's, what do we say, February 18th? We got more special guests on ATI than ever before. So, listen, if you go to comment on the YouTube channel, my check one, two. You go to make a comment. And if I don't reply or I don't see it, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on. More and more of these comments, I go to read them, they're not available. Why? I don't know. I also don't know why it said 325 people watching on the 14th. I even, look at me, double. I'm double-taking, like, what? 
325 people. I double taked. I look at the software, the streaming software. Yep, it's true. It's spiking. High five, get the champagne. But wait a minute. After it's streamed, it's only 31? All right. Well, just take it under advisement. I don't know. I don't know. Send in your comments to Auto Transport Intel. Auto Transport Intel at gmail.com. This is how you get your car shipping business news. You can put it up on the big screen. You know what time it is. We're right on time. Because it is now time. Here we go. It is approaching 7.30 on a Tuesday night on ATI. That means it is time for five new questions. That's right. Are you a car shipping guru? Let's find out. Question one. All of the following help a customer feel more at ease about their vehicle shipment except vehicle tracking, open communication, text message updates, or the cheapest price. There we go. Thank you, Larry. You mind reader. Got this one. I got... I'm going to be one of one. I'll be spraying champagne in the cubicles tonight. What's up, Geek Offline? Who else did I miss in the live chat? Lots of fire. I see fire and hand claps. I like it. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, and Joe's here. What's up, Joe? Let's see here. Oh, Sideshow the Producer. What's going on? Flags and, and chalices. <laughs> All right, man. Love it. Thank you. All right, here we go. Question two. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2017 Kia Soul from Dallas, Texas to Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Is it 395, 505, 665, 895? Dallas to Milwaukee. Uh, well, I know given this time of year, plus is this is this with ice pay? Um, I'm going to go with like maybe yesterday, today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's rate will be 1895. Um, the rate today could be six. I'm going to go with 665. Dallas to Milwaukee. No. Eh. Hmm. I'm stumped already. I don't want to miss any of these. I, I, I hate getting these wrong. I never get them all. <laughs> Thanks, Geek. So cool. I really appreciate that. Um. But right now, I'm. I need. I need to phone a friend. Ooh. I'm gonna call Sky. Sky. What is it, man? Put y'all. Put you on speakerphone. Just give me the answer. Eight ninety-five. I know. I'm real tempted. See, Will's got it though. See, is it six sixty-five or eight? It's really. It could be either. I would. I would believe either right now. Does it run and drive? Good question. We're gonna assume it does. It would say in op otherwise. Yeah, I can't go for that. No, no, no. Can do. Uh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't want to get it wrong, but I got to pick. I'm just going to do... I'm going to do 895. Given what's going on right now. 895. Sold! Question 3. Roughly, how much does a gallon of diesel fuel weigh? 7 pounds, 9 pounds, 11 pounds, 13 pounds. Man, I have no idea. But I'd sound I, a gallon. Hmm. Is diesel heavier than unleaded? I'm guessing it is. You know, I'm thinking because here right now I'm, I'm I'm thinking okay, mowing the lawn in the summer, carrying the gallon might weigh ten pounds. I'll go with eleven pounds. I'm gonna go with eleven pounds. That sounds reasonable, right? Yeah, Dana's got ZC Dana. Dana's got 60, 665. Ooh, nine pounds? Sky's got nine pounds. Sky's gonna know this. Ooh, seven pounds? We have a debate. They'll be debating fuel weight in the cubicles tonight. Water is eight. 
So diesel's heavier than water. Or is it? Or is it lighter? It should be lighter than water, right? Man, this is getting... Dawn's husband says nine. Uh, well, what do they say? Husband's always right. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I, I, I see that on social media all the times. Husband's always right. Commercials say it. Man, it's ever that that slogan's everywhere. Oh shoot, seven point one will. So seven, I'm definitely not getting it right with 11. Is that what you're saying? You're going to ask Google? <laughs> really? <laughs> Seven pounds have to watch if you're a 20. Yeah, right, Chris, right. Yeah. Never ask the dispatcher. <laughs> um. All right, fine, I got it wrong. Because even if I guess nine... Happy wife, see, there it is. You don't hear the husband's always right. What you hear is happy wife, happy, there it is. Yeah, that's what he says when I'm not around. <laughs> oh, shoot. I thought we were talking about the weight of gas. Well, I got it wrong. Question four. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2019 Hyundai Sonata from Amboy, Washington to Miami, Florida? 890, 1105, 1590, 2010. Here we go. Well, uh, Amboy, my gosh. I don't know where that is. It's got to be two grand, though. It, it has to be. What's up, Chris? Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you for participating, supporting, and uh, tuning into the community. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Chris, What what is this one, Chris? Is it two grand? It's got to be two grand. Fifteen ninety? I hope not. To Miami? Right. Right, but Candy, Candy's a realist. Yeah, oh man, we got two 1590s. Ouch, I'm never going to get all five right, ever. What do we got, two viewers? Yeah, okay. Play your little games. Hey, what's up, Auto Ship Direct? All right, question five. A short-term transactional freight pricing that reflects the real-time balance of supply and demand in the truckload market is called instant price, short rate, spot rate, or temporary rate. Well, at least I got two right tonight. I got that one. I might have got three. Probably. I'm like I'm kind of a three out of five kind of guy. Typically. Um, all right. Yeah, what, oh, Ty was going to send you something? Yeah, that, that does ring a bell. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, that is the end of the, uh, thank you so much, Larry. Thank you for the five questions. We so appreciate it. Uh, be sure to join us on Thursday on Dispatching Live at, well, one o'clock. Show starts at noon, round one-ish. We'll do the five questions again, and then we'll do the answers. That's what we do on Thursdays. So don't forget, you can go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, become an ATI insider, and uh, talk to Ty. Let us know how we can help you. What are you looking for? Are you looking for a trailer? You got a qu questions about regulations? Join us on Wednesdays on TOD compliance. What can we help with? We want to know. And it is now, oh, good. We're halfway through industry news. So uh, let me do this, get some ELD punch in my system, and I'll be right back. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. 
Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Hey, you need help staying loaded or moving a car? That's the voice of Sue. She runs a dispatch office. She's a fully licensed broker. She's my co-host on Thursdays on Dispatching Live. Visit murphyautotransportservices.com. Links in the live chat. Thank you so much. Um, All right, here we go. Part two of industry news. Here we go. Charge across America. Man, EVs are being talked about. There's a reason. People have questions. People are skeptical, suspicious, etc. Well, uh, on Charge Across America, now I watched this. It premiered on NBC. Um, I saw a replay of it on YouTube TV. And basically, it's a one hour. They So with Charge Across America, it was like seven or eight days or... or I'm going to get that number wrong, but uh, they started on the East Coast, ended in L.A. and or Vegas, maybe, and they went across, and they were being recorded. There were five teams, uh, five vehicles of EVs, and the point is, the point of all of this, Jay, would you just get to the point? The point is that what I learned, and I think just as they learned, is that charging, yeah, we have questions, and there are many questions, But, um, yes, there aren't enough charging stations, and then when there are, they don't always work. They have different capacities of uh, gigawatts or whatever. See? Need more information. And then the connections to the vehicles are different. So, So here's what we need to do before we start thinking about loading these things. We need to know more about what's the charging network like? And what kind of chargers are being used? So, uh, Volkswagen's Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, Blink, EV Connect, Green Lots, and Tesla. So, these are the different chargers, charging networks we need to learn more about. We're going to keep our ear out again. Let's say it again. Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, Blink, EV Connect. Green Lots and Tesla. That's a lot of different flavors of ice cream out there to charge the car with. Um, and so, let's see. Here's some more information. Tesla came out on top for the luxury sales crown. I didn't know there was a luxury sales crown. Um, but um, Cox Automotive says there is. And um, so they gave this to, let's see, EV Tesla beat out BMW. Okay, there we go. Then in a nutshell, there's your sales crown of the day. Uh, EV Big 3 charge into battle. GM, Ford, and Tesla. Who would have thought EV Big 3 would include two of the Detroit Big 3, GM, Ford, plus Tesla? Uh, Six million electric cars will be shipped in 2022. Greater China will account for 46%. Western Europe at 1.9 million. I know what you're thinking. Where's the U.S. number, Jay? I'm going to I'm gonna click away. <laughs> yeah, you might. Uh, North America is expected to be the third highest region in shipments at 855,000 EVs. I know it's not in the millions, but it's still... Okay. Uh, it's still... You know, much more than it was. Gartner forecasts that the number of global public EV chargers will rise from 2 million units in 2022, up 1.6 from 2021. That's a big increase in chargers. What is that? Up from 1.6, 25% increase. It's pretty large. GM's putting $7 billion, billion into Michigan EV production. This is pocket change, right? Uh, Raynal Nissan, $26 billion over the next five years. Let's see, 26 divided by five. Yeah, it's probably similar. Okay. But this is the, what is it, largest ever single investment to cover four plants. Ty, by the way, Ty is loving this EV news. 
Auto auctions keep a close watch on EV infrastructure developments. Um, NAAA, here, here's one for you, Ty. The NAAA has made EVs a priority, in particular to legislation and guidance around federal funding that impacts the charging stations. Who's going to pay for it? it? Looks like we are. NAAA CEO Trisha Heehan said in an emailed message to members Wednesday, we want to keep you informed about how federal legislation could affect our industry regarding EVs and EV charging stations. As we know, so many of you are eager for information. Case in point, the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, she explained, is a $5 billion in funding that would go to the National Electric Vehicle Formulation Program. Through the act, the money would be allocated to states to set up charging infrastructure. Charging infrastructure. There's also $2.5 billion in funding as part of the act that go to the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Program. Lots of money going into this thing. Man, millions and billions. And zillions. Electrified vehicles getting a look-see from gas-powered car owners, so they're getting attention. According to a study, 41% of gas-powered vehicle owners are either likely or somewhat likely to consider buying a battery electric or plug-in hybrid vehicle next time they buy a car. 41%. Of course, um, it's not all wine and roses. Europe's EV drive comes with environmental social risks. Stellantis CEO says, this is the Stellantis CEO. It's not dude on the corner. Um, and Biden automakers face cultural divide in the U.S. You don't say. Really, Jay? Thought it was a family show. Uh, oh, here, yeah, here we go. Sweeten the pot. Joe Biden wants electric vehicles to account for fifty percent of new car sales by twenty thirty. Well, yeah, and Norway. I think Norway's in there too. Or maybe they already have that. Uh, Tesla recalls nearly fifty four thousand U.S. vehicles for rolling stop software. See. I bring this up because I'm not I'm not going to shy away from it. See, when you we know we're going to keep hearing these stories, you know, whatever, uh, an accident, total failure, etc. But it's not going to stop the EV and the autonomy. It's just it's going to be all part of it. It's not going to stop. Um, this is an interesting one too. Independent auto dealerships in American Gray Swan. When a black swan shows up with severe impact and consequences, everyone's caught off guard. Black Swan is an event in human history that was unprecedented and unexpected at the point in time it occurred. However, after evaluating the surrounding context, you could conclude it was bound to happen. Interesting context here with the EV and the autonomy. I put this, this was on the podcast last week. It may sound crazy to think there's a reality where you can't simply show up at a car dealership, look at cars, pick one, and drive it home. And yet some locations have already shifted to online sales and service only. Cars on the move. We are all, everyone's talking about Car Bravo. Car Bravo, Car Bravo, Car Bravo Bravo.com. Coming spring 22. Uh, FordBlueAdvantage.com, right? <laughs> why, why go to the dealer's website when you can just go straight to the OEM, right? Oh, oh, oh what? Wasn't supposed to say that. Uh, Ford boosts online used car platform with money back guarantee and sweetening the pot. They're giving used vehicle marketplace up an upgrade, adding a 14-day, 1,000-mile money back guarantee. On FordBlueAdvantage.com. But OEM websites are not clicking with consumers. Is that true? 53% of OEM websites saw satisfaction decline in the feature that helps shoppers find a vehicle. Well, nuts. GM moves service parts catalog online. GM is launching a digital marketplace in the U.S. that will make a 45,000 service parts available for purchase online with options for home delivery or pickup. Can we get that delivered to the Walmart? We're going to be there at 8. 
Oil filters, engine, cabin air filters, batteries, brake pads, accessory belts, cooling hoses, windshield wiper blades, among other parts. GM forecasts that online sales of its parts and accessories will add up to $40 billion in 2030. Yikes. Not to mention the uh, what they're planning to make with, uh, what is it, hydroelectric and the chargers and the stuff. They're a utility company, dude. So, <laughs> flying car moves close to reality. Okay. That's enough progressive stuff in one show. We'll just skip that. Let's go ahead. Click that. Let's do the next thing. Hey, did you see the size of Alaska? <laughs> really, Jay? No, really. Actually, I no, I meant to hit that. I think that's fascinating. Isn't that fascinating? Go ahead and take a screenshot. I don't mind. Um, you know, we started an hour earlier and we're proud of it. Thank you so much for tuning in at the earlier time. Uh, join us for DOT Compliance every Wednesday where we talk about how we do. And listen, we don't want you to be the flip of the week. Don't do that. There's no need. Dispatching live load board search advice Thursdays at noon. Um, we had repo appointment times last week with special guest Brianna Cox. And, um... Yeah, man. Call ahead on this one. You're going to want to... Oh, you got a question about the load board? Join us on Thursdays. Cars on the Move is Fridays at noon. Dealers, auctions, and carriers with... Uh, <laughs> really? Um, we did car dealer crossover on Friday with Tim on the Melting Block of Ice. You know that's the last Friday of every month, the Melting Block of Ice with Tim Scottelis. And um, we're gonna be. Are we? Gonna, is that right, Ty? Are we gonna be? We're gonna be live in Florida with Jack Sports Storage on Friday. Do you know that? Um, <coughs> excuse me, Keenan, Car Hauler Keenan. He's gonna join us too. He's never been on the channel before. We just did, uh, We just talked. Had a video test. He's gonna join us on Friday. It's gonna be a cool show. Check us out on Friday on Cars on the Move. If you need the links. Um, here, I'll put it right here. I've said, I've said this one here now several times. Um, you've teased us enough. Let's get the link. Let's get, here is the, putting it in the live chat. Uh, cars on the move. This is the Friday show. There's the link in the live chat. Thank you very much. Please do join us. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, and what we, two weeks ago we had finished vehicle logistics spot market. That was a great show. Kind of ties into, uh, you know, the managing operations conversation we're going to have tonight. Uh, don't forget, now this is pretty cool. So tonight is a special show because we are featuring some of the panelists that we're also going to uh, bring to CAR conference. March 22nd through March 24th in Vegas at Caesars Palace. This is a great show. Dealers, auction, used inventory, technology, auto remarketing, all in one. IARA, AAA, car conference. It's going to be awesome. And, um, oh, where'd it go? We missed it? There it is. So we're going to have a panel. We have a panel on Thursday. Day, was that technically day two? Day three? Thursday, March 24th at 2 o'clock in Vegas. I'm moderating a panel. Joe Bercari, John Robertson, Dana Rogers, who are all with us here tonight. Jose is on vacation, so Ken is going to be here. And um, so that's the panel on the 24th. We're going to do a show tonight. Don't forget, in April, you've got Automotive Intelligence Summit coming up in April in Raleigh. And also the uh, Auto Transport Growth Conference. Let's get a link to that. Here we go. I'm going to put this in. Check this out. There is a link to the Auto Transport Growth Conference in the live chat. So much news. My gosh. that's the, It's the car shipping business channel. It's 10 to 8. We're a few minutes late. That's okay. Because what we're going to do is right after this, we're going to be right back uh, with Ty. Ty is going to help me introduce our special guest tonight. We're going to give a spotlight to each one. But I said enough. Check this out. 
information, Black Widow imaging. We'll be right back live with Ty. Stick around. Is your current vehicle imaging process producing inconsistent images? Frustrating? Time consuming? At the mercy of another vendor's schedule? Well, it doesn't have to be. Black Widow Imaging provides a simple system to capture high quality images of your vehicles in seconds. Simply align the driver's side tire with the floor strength. Stop on the floor plate to scan your vehicle code and capture the exterior images. It's that easy. It's also equipped with an interactive 360 degree interior camera option so your customers don't miss any details. The results are fast, consistent 4K images that are delivered to your website in minutes. Let us show you how easy your imaging process can be anywhere in the global supply chain. Visit blackwidowimaging.com to schedule a live demo. Capture more automotive business profit with Black Widow Imaging. High resolution 4K images for OEMs, auctions, dealers, rail, port, fleet, insurance, transportation, and more. Schedule your live demo at blackwidowimaging.com. Links are in the live chat. Thanks, everybody, for saying hello. We're just getting everybody situated. A little bit of lighting. Uh, they're laying down the camera dolly track. We got some uh, we got some trees in the background. They're still putting in the right place. Uh, makeup, wardrobe, and we got electric. Yeah, that light over there, that looks good. Just go a little bit that way. Excellent. Everybody's getting set up. So wonderful. Um, I'm gonna gonna I'm I'm gonna need some ATI swag at car. Oh yeah, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because um, yeah, this is our first. This is <laughs> we don't know exactly what to expect. It's our first ATI booth at a show. Between the panel and the booth, um, yeah, we're gonna I mean, we're it's gonna be cool. But I don't know if we have that. All right, yeah, let's do that. Keep going. Ty's doing a test. Keep doing your test, Ty. That's cool. You're right, I need ATI grips. Exactly. Uh, in fact, I don't know who the best boy grip will be. Who's the best boy electric? I'm rusty on this. Uh, but there's always a best boy. In fact, well, that probably will end this year. No more best boy! <laughs> auto ship direct says hello auto direct everything you need to know that's cool with you guys all right i'll tell you what here's what we're gonna do um ty is gonna join us in the panel ty's gonna join us in the panel so here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna put uh, ty in the green room and um what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in uh i'm gonna bring in joe Bercari. Joe Bercari is first up. Now, um, so Joe, go ahead and get everything ready. I'm going to bring you in here and give you the, um, roll out the red carpet for Joe. Um, yeah, good thing I took the over, says Joe. We need to make hats. That is a good idea. ATI making car hauling great again. Wow, thanks, man. That's super cool. Um, so we've got Flor Friday Florida Fun Facts. On Friday, yeah, Friday, Florida, fun facts. All right, here we go. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, for your patience, for joining us tonight. Here we go. We now have Joe Burkhardt. He's the VP and GM of Midwestern Car Carriers. On center stage, Joe, can you see us and hear us okay? Loud and clear. How are you? Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Good to see you all. Um, so Joe, now I've seen, I was reading stuff in the live chat. You know the drill here. You know what we do. You know what this channel's about. And you also know, okay, so this show, so this is, here we go. Here's some context. Car conference in March. We're going to talk about, it's a, it's a different version of managing auto transport operations. Ooh, there's the thumbnail in the background there. Um, but how do we, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about like 
the incredible cost of car hauling. Remember I said that? Yep. And then I realized, yeah, that's, that is important, and that's what I want to get to. But before we can talk about that, we have to go back to what's the client, what's the shipper thinking? Right. Right? So if I hand you the microphone and turn the spotlight at you for that, what, how can you kick us off in that discussion? Oh, man, service, service, service. That's what it all boils down to. You start out, I mean, at the end of the day, we're a service business. And, you you know, you can, you can cut it any way you want. But at the end of the day, we are, are, we, we are paid by a customer who expects us to deliver a product from A to B in a timely and in a timely manner. Now, we want to do that in a safe fashion, but, you know, the timely manner is a kind of a key thing part of this whole equation. So no matter what aspect of this business that you enter into, you know, you really are, are you're, you're, you're charging towards that, that velocity, you know, deliver a product in a timely manner so that that way uh, your, your product is, you know, safe, clean, no damages, and that everybody goes home to their family at the end of the day. And in a nutshell, I can't, I can't make it cleaner than that, Jay. <clears throat> I like it. So then, all right, A to B on time with great service. So since you manage auto transport operations at Midwestern Car Carriers, you work with the you work with the numbers, right? Not only the pricing, but the capacity numbers, the expectations. Tell me what service do they expect? What's what kind of service do your clients expect? Well, I mean, they all, they all have different ways of measuring it. At the end of the day, how long does it sit on the ground? How long does it get before it gets dispatched? How long before it gets delivered? You know, it, the, 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 the green flag and the checkered flag can be different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, but, you know, at its core, the object is to ship as fast as possible. And, you know, if you're moving nothing but loads from, let's just say, you know, Kansas City to St. Louis, that's really easy to manage because you've got, you know, one pickup, one destination, and it's, you know, it's always going to be relatively in sync. As long as you have a full truckload, man, you're rolling. Things change when you deal with, all right, well, I'm going to drop off, I'm picking up in Kansas City, and this is a ridiculous example, but I'm picking up in Kansas City and I'm dropping off in uh, you know, St. Louis, and then I'm going to Sykeston, and then I'm going down to Cape Girardeau, you know, you're running the old river route. Now, all of a sudden, you know, your your whole dynamic shifts. You know, the interesting thing is that, you know, manufacturers deal with big data, so they want to see, you know, they're looking at a, a corporate average. They don't care that Sykeston or St. Louis or, you know, Warrenville, or I mean, I'm picking up names. I'm you know, not picking on any town, but uh, they don't care that that place only the, only actually buys you know six cars a year. They want to make sure that that falls within the average. And so your expectation is if that hits the ground. You like to use the word melting block of ice, Jay. It's sort of that thing. I mean, as as we look at it, it has a clock that's ticking down, and we got to ship it you know before a certain time knowing that there is an expected time in transit and then you know whatever so uh that that's basically the way we look at it we we're trying to target a a dwell average of x based upon a customer's manufacturer a customer's average manufacturer's average and then we try and figure out how it is that we can you know meet that expectation or exceed it if it's possible and it all boils down to economics you know price matters when the when the customer sends us these bid packages they say you know this is our expectation on service price it accordingly now anyone that's been in our industry for any length of time will know that there are some companies that pay more attention to that some companies that pay less attention to that I will say no more on the subject other than you all know who we are. So, uh, price accordingly, yes. So, how 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 high is the danger probability of messing up that bid? 
<laughs> daily. I mean, if you think about it, uh, I'll, let me give you a real a real world example. It just happened. Uh, no kidding. Uh, just just happened very recently, where um, a truck broke down, and uh, the only possible repair for that truck was to break the tractor and the trailer apart. Now that anybody that knows anything about a loaded car hauler understands that when they break apart, it's very, very hard to do anything. Um, anybody that also has been familiar with our business right now knows that we're in a part shortage for, uh, for, for, for big rig repairs. And um, yeah, so that truck and therefore its freight was tied up and it was horrible. Uh, terrible situation. Nobody won. Literally nobody won. No, the company lost. The customers were waiting for their, their vehicles to get delivered. I mean, it, you, you could not have scripted a worse scenario. Uh, and that happened. And, you know, I, I <laughs> that that's one decision. I mean, you know, that, that that one decision to break the tractor or trailer apart just blows everything to smithereens. I mean, it, it, that's how that goes. I mean, so when I say daily, yeah, I mean, no kidding, daily. Um, yeah, that, that's what we do on the management side is manage risk, you know, manage, you know, how the traffic is going to flow, manage how the, you know, hey, uh, this, this truck is going to break down, but he'll probably be up in four hours, let him roll. If that truck is, is broke down, uh, we need to make another decision, send the truck down to go rescue that load and so on and so forth. So, yeah, daily, daily. So uh, given that those problems arise, how often or do you, or is it different types of clients, can you go back and, and adjust the bid? No. Or you, you're locked in? No, you're locked in. The bid is what it is. And and, and it should be, by the way. I mean, you got to think about it. You know, the, the, the customers are expecting, meaning I'm saying that the OEMs are expecting that you're going to deliver a certain product at a certain time, it, 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 it's ridiculous for you as a carrier to go back to them and say, on second thought, I mean, they, they, you know, that, no, you're locked in. Yeah. And yeah, that, so that's one of the, that's one of the tough parts. That's what you have to predict. Well, something that, like that, this, that, that's, that's maturity in the business. I mean, you you know, you, you, <laughs> if you don't have that maturity in the business to understand that, you know, you're going to keep your promises 99% of the time, you probably need to be working for a different business. I mean, that's how this goes. This is a relationship. I, I cannot tell you how many times I've said this is a relationship business. This is a people business. You know, it, 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 you, know you have to preserve your reputation. By, by keeping your word. If you goof, that's how that goes, man. You better be ready to figure figure out how to fix it. All right, and the last section before, then we'll, we're, uh, we're going to do for a few more minutes, then we're going to move on to <laughs> Dana, give him 10 minutes, etc. How do you think that um, when it comes to software and tracking and inspections, you know, some of the more visible parts that we hear about, in other areas of the industry. How, how do you think that's going? Well, I think that in general, we're probably uh, a few years behind the rest of the world um, in a certain sense. Uh, I think that we probably, there are probably things we could do that would, that would be better. But the other thing is I hate when car hauling is, is compared to Amazon because we're not the same thing. And by the way, you don't want us to be the same thing. You know, anybody that's, that's seen someone, you know, dump off an Amazon package in the front porch, do you really want that same person delivering your $65,000 automobile? You, you don't, you shouldn't, you should demand better. And, and I think that, um, you know, so yeah, logistics may be shifting in a certain sense, and I think that it's a good thing that it is, you know, moving in a, a particular direction. But I mean, did Amazon solidify the rest of the market? I mean, does, did did Amazon 
standardized the rest of the logistics market? No, I don't think so. And I don't think you want it to, because if you did, it's probably going to get kind of gnarly. I don't think that's going to be good. Well, and this is where, I mean, it brings us back to the expectations the client has. Well, this is the OEM level. I mean, of all the clients out there, the OEM is probably saying, well, we made the product. We know its value. We know what it takes to take care of it. And therefore, maybe they're a little more reasonable on the bid versus well, other clients. I don't know. They yeah. have decades of information to be able to fill that information in for sure. But I mean, you know, uh, no, I mean, for, let, let me say this. I mean, uh, you know, the, the way the OEMs go, so goes the rest of the industry. You know, uh, were it not for the new product, then the subsequent industries would, would not follow. And I think that uh, you know, so the tendency is that if there's a, you know, if there's a lead in the OEM, the rest of the industries are going to have a tendency to follow. I mean, that, that, so. And, yeah. And I want to add, this is that what we see like Finnish vehicle logistics show in the fall, mm -hmm. do we see a lot of OEM talk about the, their, their need to value the carriers more and work with driver schedules and that. So. <laughs> There's some outreach there. Is that right? Well, I mean, look why. I mean, not going to lie. I mean, maybe I'm going to go way off script. Sorry, J Jay, sorry. I'm going to go <laughs> off script. I know you find this shocking. But look why. By the fall, they realized there was a capacity shortage, and they were basically, boop. <laughs> they're going to say that. Of course, they're going to be like, hey, the suppliers are the most important people in the in the universe. we got to go. We have to have the best relationship. We got to take good care of those. Hey, whatever. All that, right. Well, maybe and, you'll and, see. You'll see. And well, there we go. And uh, yeah. Well, I think what we're gonna do is as we keep moving around, we're gonna see that all of the verticals. You have to play nice eventually. Is there? Would that be the bumper I, sticker here? No. The, the bumper. No. The bumper sticker is the customer is undefeated. I've said this. I got. I learned this from one of my closest mentors in all the world. The customer is undefeated. At the end of the day, the, the you know the guy writing the check is un or or, or the the person the whomever is writing the check is undefeated. So you know our job in this industry is to make sure that that is protected. At the end of the day, that's what we all do. Now, I I'm 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 coy about you know how the industry flips and flops and of course they say those things and whatever but but let's be clear at the end of the day the customer is undefeated none of us are going to be able to overcome the fact that at some point someone's ability to say i'm going to pay for this service is going to drive our living our standard of living all of those things all right Thank you, Joe. That's awesome. The customer is undefeated. Let's do this. I'm going to go back to camera one. Joe, I'm going to put you back into the waiting room for now. Um, because what we're going to do is we're now going to bring in Dana Rogers. He is uh, president of Pre-Owned Auto Logistics. And um, we're going to spend a few minutes with Dana talking about um, managing auto transport operations. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much for jumping in the live chat. And um, I see some lively interest. In oh, yeah. Hey, Ron. Ron gets the super chat cowbell. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ron. Uh, really do appreciate it. It's a very uh, generous contribution. Thank you so much for doing that. Okay, here we go. Um, and let's see, I'm not missing anything else. All right, so please do help me wish a warm welcome to Dana Rogers. He's the president of Pre-Owned Auto Logistics, a friend of the show, friend of ATI. We got a chance to spend some time with Dana and crew at Used Car Week in Vegas. Dana, can you see me and hear me okay? I got you, Jay. How about, can you hear me? Yeah, we got good check. Mike, right. check one, we, two. All we right. We didn't have good luck the other day, but uh, we're doing we're doing good today. That's why we, 
We try to cover our bases and make sure we're on the same page. We know what's going on. Um, all right, so Dana, you're going to join us in Vegas at Car Conference. Can't wait. I know. Me either, right? It's going to be cool. And so as, as a lead into that, because the question is, all right, so I said mm -hmm. it in the intro, is that I've seen... I've seen auto transport discussions that I thought were light on auto transport. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to try and bring information to the surface. And I know that, you know, it might sound a little nutty or, 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 you know, presumptuous. But what's great is, Dana, when I talk to you, I know we're talking about auto transport business. Um, and also, like Joe was talking a lot about OEM, OEMs as his clients. You have a different vertical as your clients. Will you tell us more about your business? Sure. I mean, you know, our our, our main client dealer um, dealer community, private parties, and now we've got that whole you know aspect of the <clears throat> online sourcing um, providers, online auctions. So we're really getting getting involved with that whole community. Um, you know, went from a asset based company to more of a technology uh, driven company. You know, now we're instead of buying trucks, we're um, talking APIs and integrations, and um, really kind of making that uh, that that process really smooth for our clients. All right, and so on that, what's interesting is Joe said, "Service, A to B on time." Has to be right. Right. Customer demands it. <laughs> they Why? demand it, and not only do they demand it do, in specific terms. What are they demanding? I mean, nuts and bolts. Let's say, let's say you know nothing about what we're talking about. What is that dealer client demanding specifically? Well, you know, so we just come off the end of the month, right? So a dealer at the end of the month, they want that car, whatever they have, right? Whether it's a used car or usually a new car swap or whatever they have coming in, they need to get that on the books by the end of the month. So they expect those cars fast, right? They don't want excuses they don't want time delays they want to make sure that that car hits their lot and they can deliver it to to get their uh their sales up for the end of the month do you feel like you're you have enough information to make sure that happens or is there do you have to chase some of the information i mean what's the there's the expectation is that you know the carrier is going to get it done are you getting enough information up front to make that happen, or is there a lot of legwork in that process? Well, you know, I mean, you know, price is price is key, right? Um, you know, you got to get the carrier paid, right? And they and they deserve pay if they're going to deliver a good product on time. So, you know, that's the first thing you've got to price the move to uh, price the order to move. That's that's one of the, the main keys. You know, I've, I think I've heard price the order to move have to it's it's a must right if you, you can't have it um you know good and cheap right right i mean it's 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 the it, truth right and this brings us back to so i think i I, read, I think on linkedin i said fast easy cheap but it's fast good cheap you've got it that, otherwise you'll be the unicorn in the middle if you need all three exactly yep i mean the, the customer expects all three and, and and you know everyone wants to deliver that um Fast and cheap usually winds up not being good, right? So how do you then explain this? Right? What? How? How? Do, how does one set, explain setting the this? customer expectations? Ah, setting ex right? set the expectations. All right. So you know, we 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 price things. Um, we actually give the customer a choice in in some circumstances. You know, whether they want to price it to move within a day or two or they want to price it to move within four or five days, you know, so they can kind of have that option, you know, so that helps set that expectation. Do you want it, you know, $500 moves it in five days or, you know, $650 or $625 might move that in, in two days. And so you can say, what are your, right, I guess then you can turn, well, what are your expectations? In most, say, right. And yeah, now you can point exactly. at the right choice on the menu. Yep, A or B. <laughs> Which, Which is it, actually that, that I just said menu, because when we sit down at a restaurant, we assume we know what the dishes are, 
I'm assuming I know what General Cho's chicken is. Even you though think. I may have had it somewhere you, else. You think right? you do. <laughs> I think I do. So I order General Cho's, General Cho's chicken. I didn't ask, nor was I told how they prepare or etc. I just assumed because I knew, and then I get it, and then I'm I'm dissatisfied. How how can you cut off the dissatisfied and missed expectations? Communication, right? Communication. So things are going to happen. No matter what, things are going to happen. Someone's going to break down, like Joe said. You know that pot that took a couple weeks to get, and you know the whole load was sitting sitting in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know that happens. So strong communication. Uh, that that really is the key. Whether it's a dealer or a private private party, or even a um, you know a auction house or whoever your client is, you've got to keep them keep them informed. They come out of the kitchen and say, "Listen." It's going to be great. It's not ready yet. Would you like some more something? Anyways, communicate. I'm, I'm drawing a yeah. parallel to keep the visual going is communication. That's that's the key. Keep your customer informed. Keep the customer informed. Yeah. Do you think that's happening? Do you think, do you think that on average clients feel that that's happening or it's not happening? You know, I don't. I don't think it is happening as an everyday practice for a lot of companies. Um, whether they might just not have the staff to do it too. I mean, it takes it takes uh, people to people to do a lot of these tasks. Is it a is it a phone call? Is it an email? Is it a text? Is there any standard? Well, nowadays, right? You you've kind of got to be a master of all of it. Um, texting, emails, and phone calls. You know, sometimes those old fashioned phone calls they they work sometimes you know people want to hear a voice sometimes too do you think is there is apology in there as well or is it just straight up information here's the status you know sometimes you can say sorry too much you definitely do not want to say sorry too much yeah i mean a lot of those but a lot of things are out of your control exactly that's right um so we talked about no what okay here we go i asked joe this and then um then i'm going to put you back in the waiting room and we're going to go on to john next the question is software tracking visibility vehicle inspections you think we're on track are we a little behind what do you hear what do you think the industry is definitely behind but um you know there, there seems to be a, a strong push right now which is which is good um, you know, companies like Super Dispatch, they've got a great tool. Um, I give them a plug right now. They've got one of the slickest uh, condition reports on the market. So, you know, stuff like that helps, right? Easy to use. It's about, you know, making it easy for the driver to use, right? Because this has to be, it, it's driver focused. They're the ones that have to, you know, initiate this. So make some tools that are easy to use and, you know, friendly and I think we're heading in the right direction. Okay, excellent, Dana. Thank you for that. Um, I'm like I said. I'm gonna go back. Here we go. Camera one. I'm gonna put Dana back into the waiting room, and we're gonna bring in John at Ship Your Car now. And um, now John is a senior executive VP at Ship Your Car now. And let's go ahead and get things ready. Let's check the live chat. I saw Auto Ship Direct Aqua on Bats figures that out. That's interesting. Um, to mention software and um, love the dealer. Ty likes to say that very much, um, and we do. We talk about that a lot. Um, and on this show, this is one of the things we're doing here is we're couching where client expectations meet expenses, uh, which isn't the easiest thing to tread. But we're doing our best. So here, do me a favor. Please help me wish a warm welcome to John Robertson at Ship Your Car Now. John, can you see me and hear me okay? I see you. I hear you, Jay. I feel you. And I understand. All right. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. Thank you, John. Thanks for taking the time. Um, hopefully the drum roll isn't too much. Put it in the live chat. So, John, so here we are. All right, so we're you're going to be uh, with me 
on the panel in Vegas in March at Car Conference. Um, we're trying to have a next level discussion about transportation, client expectations, expense, and the other parts related to transportation that don't make it so easy. We hear folks at dealers, folks at auctions, they say things about transportation that, you know, make us wonder how we're doing. What would what do we want to say back sometimes though? How do we level the field? I think one of the things that's happening right now, Jay, and it, it's a big part of the new business norm, right? Because we're all doing different kind of moves now. We're doing consumer pickups, consumer deliveries. We're doing dealer to dealer, dealer to auction. Got to get there by the lane. That's old school. We all knew we had to be there by the time the, the lane was going to open with the truckloads at the auction. But one of the biggest changes I'm seeing in the marketplace today is that there is or was and still is to a large extent. You know, carriers, and I, I say this to everybody, auto transport is not UPS. Auto transport does not have a truck that runs the same route every day and arrives at the same door at every hour, every day. That's not auto transport. It's not the way it works. Anybody on this call knows that's not the way it works. But what's happened is the customer's expectations have become that we're UPS, that we're FedEx that we're Amazon, that we have that little widget that says, hey, guess what? We're one day out. We're going to be there tomorrow before between three and four. Hey, guess what? There's a call at noon. It looks like we're going to be there at 315. Hey, guess what? We're running a little bit late. It's going to be 345. And when we're 415, the customer's freaking out. And in the old days, you know, 15 years ago, if you got there within three days, you were in pretty good shape. And you didn't even necessarily need to communicate when you were going to be there. But now we've got people that have taken time off work, people that have babysitters, people that got to live, leave for the kids' soccer practice. We have to, as an industry, do a lot better job of getting to those windows for delivery that we're not used to doing. And that is a tough pill to swallow for this industry because that is not the way that we've behaved in the past. But is what it's what the market's demanding today and how we communicate that to those end customers. And I'm not talking the clients. The client is the person that contracted us for the job. The customer is the person that's getting the car, getting the car picked up. How we communicate that to those customers has got to be new and dynamic and way more technically advanced than what we have today. And so we got to get there because guess what? Somebody said it earlier, I forget it. Who it was, but we are behind in that. We are we are behind in how we behaved, and the market has changed. And so, the sooner we can adapt, and the sooner we can bring on technology and tools to meet those demands, the better off we're going to be. And whoever wins that game is going to win the game. Client versus customer. It's a good point. It's not always the same entity. And and, and our clients our clients require us, expect us, demand of us to communicate directly with that customer. We're not even calling the client anymore. I'm calling Susie, who's gonna be, you know, she's not on conference calls, work from home between nine and 10 in the morning. If I don't show up between nine and 10, she can't take delivery till next Tuesday. That's that's a that's a huge change. Um, it, you made me think of, I ordered a car part and it wasn't at the store that I was talking to. They're like, well, yeah, we'll have it this afternoon because they all have these networks of, of runners or, or whatever, right? That, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, right. And I've also heard someone say, you know, yeah, well, I'm not the milkman. Now, right. Ty will tell you that, well, now Ty has been the milkman at times, but you can do that maybe on a couple runs. Or, as Joe's talking about with the OEM, you know, you've got, you know that since time is of the essence... He didn't, we didn't talk about this specifically, but we know that many trucks run empty half the time just to make that time happen. For sure, for sure. Which, again, I mean, I understand, and I'm not, I'm not in that business, but uh, that has its own ramifications. And now well, there, the price has to, yeah, go ahead. There, there's absolutely a cost associated with it. I mean, we're talking about drivers that, you know, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. 
we're talking about a driver who is got a truckload of cars, seven different delivery locations for nine different units. He's got a, a delivery time for 9 a.m. the next morning with customer X, not client X, customer X. He gets to town early. He's anxious to get to his next deliveries. He calls that customer at nine o'clock at night and says, hey, can I bring the car by? And the customer loses their mind. No, you can't bring, you can't deliver the car at nine o'clock. I got the kids in bed. I'm in my pajamas. I've had four beers. You can't deliver the car. And this isn't, you know, you can't drop it in the driveway. It's not Amazon. I can't just leave it by the garage door. So that driver is now expected and required, quite frankly, to park and sit. Well, guess what? The only time they want to park and sit is when their hours are up. They don't want to park and sit because they have to wait till tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. They want to get on the road. And so that mindset of having that scheduled delivery process is, is just a huge cultural change in this industry that I don't know if anyone's addressing yet, but it's happening every day. Well, and like Joe mentioned, again, you every time you add a delivery, stop. You've completely... That's, I think that's part of the problem. So along with the menu of pricing accordingly, the, the shipper, the client, the customer, maybe everybody needs to know, every time you add a delivery stop, you're changing the game. Yeah, it, it's no longer, I'm going to get to the East Coast on Thursday and start delivering these cars all around this area. Now it's, I'm going to get to the coast on Thursday I'm going to be here on Thursday at 9. I'm going to be here on Thursday at 11. I'm going to be here on Thursday at 5. I'm going to be here Friday morning at 9. It gets very much, it, it's a lot more complex. Now, I'm not saying that the customers are completely unreasonable in their expectations. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring the fact that trucks break down. That's an issue that changes everything. So let's not even go there. But assuming the truck hasn't broken down, now the issue becomes communication. Because now you can potentially reschedule. You can potentially move things around. But you can't just show up in their driveway anymore. It just doesn't. We're not delivering to dealerships as much as we used to. We are. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we deliver everywhere. But yeah. for these type of moves, which are becoming more and more predominant in our industry, it's, it's a, you can't treat it like the old way. It doesn't work the same. So, and uh, this, this is really interesting because many times you'll see a load five vehicles and in parentheses in small print four different drop-off locations this is not a small print deal it should be in giant letters four different locations and i want to say this too, as you've designed those drop windows we got this problem where as soon as information changes people get mad just at the change of information it it's 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 unbelievable how much communication has to occur around that because now you have a level of communication that's with the customer you have a level of communication with its client you have a level of communication with the carrier and everybody communicates differently and one's a text one's an email one's a phone call to your point earlier i mean it's all about how do they want to be communicated with but the accuracy of information is what matters at the end of the day so if you don't have something set up to retain and communicate the accuracy of that communication to where you're going, you're you're dead in the water. You just it, it, it's a it's a nightmare for everybody today. And no, I don't want to be Amazon. I see you out there. I think it's Joe. I don't want to be Amazon. I hear you, brother. But the customers, those end guys think everything gets delivered like Amazon today. They're being trained, man. I don't know how we work with that. It's just it's tough. It's tough. Well, it is tough. And so what other industry is like this? You know, um, it, it's really a change in, and you can, you can blame it on the pandemic. You can blame it on virtual stores. You can blame it on the fact that Ford wants to sell vehicles direct to consumers. Um, but you know what? Most industries are like this. We're not. Freight is not in, in a lot of senses. Some freight is, some freight isn't. But we haven't been that way. But I think it's us that's a little bit different that have these two-day windows for, for opening. And that's that's just how the, the industry's been that way forever. I mean, it, I, you know, if you got there, your deadline was get it there by the end of the week. They don't care if you get there Monday through Friday, right? That's old school. Today, it's like, 
<laughs> they, they go nuts if you don't, don't get there between two talk and four. Like that. No, totally. Mm-hmm. It, it is fascinating, and I will say this too, is that uh, it's when we look at the dealer, if we, let's look at the customers, the, the, uh, the buyers that ordered from the dealer and days went by and they never heard back. You hear these stories where a customer's like, oh, yeah. I, bought from a, I bought from a dealer, they said it'd be here next week, I called in that week, I called the week after, nobody called me back. Boy, carriers can't get away with that. Or, or do they? I don't know. What's the... I, you know what? It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wicked uh, waterfall of effects. Because you know what? They call their sales guy and they say... You know, hey, where did this car was supposed to be here on Saturday? And the sales guy says, oh, I don't know where they, and then the GM gets involved. And then now the GM's calling, I mean, they, they're calling us and now we're calling the carrier and the carrier. And, and let's add another level of, of complexity, right? Let's call the dispatcher who's got to call the carrier, right? So let's go through that daisy <laughs> chain of communication. Oh, just gonna you say know, it's, it, it's, it's like I always say, man, it's like that old school game where we all sit around a room and we pass a, pass a message from one person to the next person. By the time he gets to the 12th guy, it's completely different. So you made a good point earlier. How well you communicate what the expectations are to that carrier so that they accept the job at a rate that they're willing to meet those requirements that are in that job have to be locked up. It's got to be, you knew it was this, you got paid that, you accepted that responsibility, you make it happen. I, you can't surprise the carrier. You can't say, take a load from here to here. And oh, by the way, be there between two and four. That's not their default expectation. Their default expectation is I'm going to pick it up mm, Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to deliver it. Mm, let's call it Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday if I'm running late. If I don't do a good job of communicating that carrier that this isn't that kind of load, shame on me. That's that's my fault. I, I've got to do a better job of letting the carrier know what he signed up for. The carrier also has to remember, hey, that's real. When I signed up for that, that's not a wish list. That's not a hope to have. That's there's a customer at the end of that, and their their expectations are pretty high today. And well, the rest of the industries say, have set us that way. That you can't you can't have any you can't surprise me with anything you already knew because there's already going to be surprises. Absolutely. And and when stuff goes south, which it will, at the end of the day, trucks break, trucks overheat, weather happens. Most consumers, in my experience, reasonably understand that. The only thing they don't understand is when you don't call them, you don't communicate, you don't tell them, and you don't tell them you're going to miss that delivery day. As long as you're real. There's always crazy people out there that don't understand the trucks break, which, you know, they shouldn't be allowed to buy cars online if that's their level of, uh, you know, <laughs> mental capacity. No, you, well, <laughs> but but you just, you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. But you, but you got to communicate. You can't not tell them. You can't just not be there. They took the day off work. You can't just not show up and later that night go, yeah, sorry, we're two states away. We'll be there on Wednesday. It doesn't work. I was just saying, it's like, you know, you just made me think, so you, those drug commercials you know, may cause your head to fall off or your liver to fall out or whatever. Well, maybe in car hauling, yeah, you might lose your mind in this process, but you will get your car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, all right, let's do this. That was great, John. So here's what we're going to do. Camera one, uh, I'm going to put John back in the waiting room, and we have one more spotlight guest. We have uh, Ken Garbez of Location Services joining us now. And um, put him on center stage for a few minutes. Let him say hello. Now, Ken has been on the show before as well. Um, everybody here tonight has been. Uh, Ken uh, was is is vice president um, and works with location services. And he was here, I believe it was June 2021, prior to car conference, um, standing in for Jose Delgado of location services. And let's just check in in the live chat. Candy's got some comments. Oh, yeah. So you liking this? This is working? This is interesting. I mean, thank you, Super Dispatch. Yeah. Um, there are some great perspectives here tonight. and uh, And that's what it's all about. And, and your your comments, your perspective, your input helps. So please keep it coming. I see. Um, oh, well, that's too bad. That message retracted. I read. I saw that. Uh, something about man, you can't drop in the middle of the night or something. It was funny. Good stuff. So thank you so much. Now, um, Ken, 
Can you see me and hear me okay? Let's do this. Okay, good. All right, so here, let's do this. Camera one. Uh, since I already started this trend, we're going to keep it going. Let's go ahead and welcome and bring in Ken Garbez of Location Services. And do me a favor, Ken. Do you have your camera on? I heard you, but I didn't see you. And oh, I wait, make sorry. Sure. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. No, you're okay. All right. Well, we please go. do welcome. We've got Ken of Location Services here with us. Ken, please once again say hello to the Tuesday Night's Live audience. Hello, Tuesday Night. How are hey. You? Um, all right, Ken, so do me a favor. So we, we had with Joe, Dana, John. Tell us more about your experience in, you know, management of operations and logistics at Location Services and all that you guys do. Well, here at Location Services, it's a little different. The majority of our, our business is local business. So we deal with a lot of local carriers, local flatbeds. Um, a lot of our repossession agents will also transport cars. So they have their own trucks. Uh, we do mostly, most of the work we deal with are, I mean, all the work we deal with are lenders, banks mostly, and credit unions. Right, exactly. You have a def definitely different moving parts. Um, transportation, recovery, auto remarketing actually interests me greatly because so you've heard, uh, did you hear, were you able to um, hear what some of the other gentlemen were saying about you know, management as far as I mean, look at these notes, man. I've got I got notes. Yep. If, 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 you, if you need a copy of tonight's show, go ahead and send me an email because I'm taking notes. Um, service. Let's go to service. Service. A to B on time. In your industry, what does that look like? In our industry, it's more about the pickup than the actual delivery. I mean, there's two parts to it. The first part is if a car in most cases not picked up in 10 or 15 days, then our lenders get charged storage. Uh, secondary, then it goes into a throughput issue. The time it takes for the car to get from the repo yard to the auction and sold at the auction, they, every day is money to a lender. Whereas I think traditionally, uh, well, I could, I could look at this a couple ways. I mean, it's money to the OEM because it's not, well, I guess it's money to the dealer because it's not on the lot. It's also money to the dealer because it's not at the auction. So I guess well, the time lenders, is money, but here you have the lenders. The, yeah, the lenders fact, um, factor in depreciation on a daily basis. And so above and beyond all fees, they're factoring in depreciation. So every day that car sits in their books, they're losing money. So when they're losing money on depreciation, what happens next? Well, the goal is to recover it at auction. But, you know, so here, here's the thing. You know how the market swings. It's just like the stock market. One day the auction's hot or a certain model's hot, right? And let's say that's a Chevy truck and that car gets, truck gets delayed. It gets to the auction a week late for whatever reason. And now the market on that vehicle for whatever reason dropped, which happens all the time. I mean, they could easily lose two thousand dollars on that vehicle. What are the consequences? Oh well, their scorecards and stuff. The consequences of losing the business as a forwarder, and we all have to have, you know, we're judged by every lender that we have on scorecards against um, direct business that they do and as a forwarders as well. That's interesting, um, because I know right in recovery repossession. There's a lot of unknowns and factors out of your control. So you just try to mitigate that as best as you can. And Absolutely. then, right, when you bid on a contract with a lender, I'm assuming, right, there's contracts and bids? Yeah, so, you know, there's there, there's two parts. It's the actual recovery, the time it takes to recover, and then it's all the pieces that fall after. So once a car is recovered, it gets a condition report, it gets pictures and so all that's a process that takes place at the repossession yard uh, some of them will get keys if they need keys uh, transport has to you know also holds which the banks obviously they put that on there so that's not counted for and then assigning the transport and many times the transport gets assigned as soon as it lands 
So on behalf of the transporters, sometimes it's difficult for them because now they have to call and make appointments, but maybe there, there's a possible redemption, so it's held there, or maybe they're waiting on keys. Um, so there's a, definitely a lot of juggling just to get that car to the next phase of the process. So I asked the question about software. Um, how do lenders feel that the software is representing their interests, their expectations? Wow. So like in our world, there's, there's a lot of different um, softwares. There's, there's software in the repossession world. There's software in the auction world. Uh, they communicate to some extent. Um, but then it comes down to the input is what's most important that is put in and managed by the forwarder or the agents and then by the auctions. So we all communicate together and that we're at the mercy of each other to make sure that that lender is, is fully informed on what's going on so they know exactly where that car stands, when it's expected to arrive. And then when it comes to our side of it, um, communicating with, with transporters and all the various softwares that they use, depending whether we're going with a direct transport or if we're going on super dispatch, and the input that's fed back on those uh, is where the time is lost and the communication is lost. So I, I'm not so sure. It's, I mean, I think the tools are, are kind of coming together and there's a lot of them, but it's what gets inputted in them, right? So if, if we're not informed by the, you know, the transporter or the locksmith on the problems that we have, we either have to be proactive and follow up on that or the, the lender is gonna ask what's happening. And many times we'll tell the lender an estimated date. It could be you know, five to seven days and they're already asking if it's delivered on the floor. And on those, so on an on estimated delivery, that's an estimate though, right? It's not a guarantee. Correct. And that where gets into right the visibility, the tracking. Uh, is there a lack of integration with different software and input? I think only because there's just multiple systems in our world that we deal with. It's not cut and dry where we're we're using you know you know, one transport software that communicates to one piece of software that's in the repossession and the auction worlds that the lenders would have access to. There's multiple platforms. Well, that's one of the reasons I find it so interesting. Um, location services motto is locate, recover, transport, remarket. And keys. And, right, and, and keys. And so... I mean, you've, you've got so many verticals to manage, integrate, and communicate across. It sounds yeah. really challenging. It can be. You don't look stressed out. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> it all it's, comes together. We've been doing this a long time. Right. But, you've um, been doing it a long time. I'm not saying it's not challenging. It is challenging. There's just, yeah. there, um, you know, when you put all those pieces together... I mean, from the beginning, from when the when the we originally get the assignment, you know, we have skip tracing involved, we have a license plate recognition that's involved. The car gets repossessed, then we're dealing directly with the agent, and then we're either dealing with the agent for keys, or we're dealing with a national locksmith for keys, and then we're either assigning a transport, whether it's local or or long distance, or the auction is assigning the transport, depending on the deal that the lender has, because there's no there's no you know perfect recipe. It just depends on what the lender wants. Well, and like, you know, with when you talk about keys, uh, you've learned by, you've made a business out of forecasting what would otherwise be a problem to now be part of the solution, which again, keys. If, right. we, if we, we, we use keys as a service to make sure that now we can stay on schedule. Yeah, correct. And there, there's, you know, there's, there may be a three to five day delay on getting the key, but now, now the car, when it's running, now it's going to go on every truck, right? So it's not going to be a problem. The truck doesn't have to have a winch, less chance for damage. It doesn't slow down the drivers. So they're happy that, I mean, ultimately happy that it costs the keys. And from the guys I've ever talked to, they'd rather have a key than an extra fee to get that up on the truck because it's just difficult in any which way you look at it, right? And then as far as a lender goes, 
I mean, it's 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 uh, like almost like an insurance policy for them because then the same thing happens when it arrives at the auction, right? So when it arrives at the auction without keys, it goes in, it gets unloaded off the truck, dragged off the truck, towed over to a non-op yard, put with all the wreck cars, right? And then the auction gets around to it when they go out whatever time of the day they go out to do the wreck cars. So it slows down the process. And then they're going to have to wait for the key to get cut again, go back out to the car and, and get the information off the car again, where which could look bad on the transporter depending on the auction because maybe they didn't get it stocked in. So maybe it's just sitting out in the tow yard for three days before the auction finds it, which that's going to go against the transport. That happens um, as far as scorecards go, right? And then uh, if it does have keys, it goes straight into a running check-in line. It's checked in immediately. Clock stops. Which is interesting that uh, with all this talk about keys, I mean, we haven't talked about this, but I'm so, I'm going to guess that with the way now, uh, I don't know what the systems are called. When you hit the button, you don't have an actual key. That, proximity. What is it? It's a proximity key. Proximity key. So that that's probably something that you think about and have to anticipate and think more about systems and EV, et cetera, right? That invades your headspace. Yeah, yeah. It's for interesting, sure. really interesting. Another, I mean, conversation for another time. So let's do this. Um, so Ken, uh, why don't, here's what I want to do, Ken. I'm going to put you in the waiting room for a minute because I'm going to bring Ty back in. Uh, okay. I think he's ready to go. And then I'm going to bring back everybody. Uh, but first, we're going to bring in Ty for a second. We're gonna, this will be like our, this will be like the halftime. This is the halftime show. Uh, me and Ty are going to take this halftime uh, moment, oh, that's freaky, um, to catch up. I'm checking in with the live chat. So, Ty, you're up next. So, Ty, do me a favor. Uh, check the YouTube. Check your audio lighting before we bring you in. John, you have to build the cost and the pricing up front. Bill Nickel, hey, all joining a little bit late. Candy is in, lively in the chat. Gary Gartha Logistics on time. What is that? <laughs> really? That's funny, man. Um, did you get that ambulance picture, Gary? Okay, so now, Ty, give me a high sign. Are you ready to go? Yeah? All right, here we go. All right, everybody else got a drum roll, and it just wouldn't be fair. Please do help me welcome on the center stage right now. You know him, you love him. Ty Thompson, cars on the move. Ty, can you see him and hear me okay? I can. How are you? And I'm good, man. Thank you. Well, good. Um, thank you, Joe, everybody, John. Uh, Ken, was it Ken? Ken and Dana. at Location Services. Ken, and yeah. Dana, pre owned <clears throat> logistics, yeah. Yeah, so watching this, uh, I'm actually glad I didn't get to come on, Well, however that worked out. Because I'm sitting here watching this, and all I can say is, how amazing is it that we have relationships with the most incredible people I've ever met in my life? I, I, mean, I know these people, right? Ken, I haven't met Ken, but uh, I, I really enjoyed what Ken was saying. So... <clears throat> I really don't oh, I know. Have... I just want to say that stuff with Ken. Don't you love it? Recovery. And he's talking about the lenders and the forwarders and the repo and the keys. Wow. What a yeah. whirlwind. Absolutely. So, you know, expectations. I, I'm, I come from dealer, pretty much used car dealer land. And uh, here's, here's what I concluded after 20 years of messing with this. Uh, love the dealer, right? Love the dealer. So what do you mean, Ty? The guy never gives you the right information. The guy never tells you which cars to take. The guy told you he bought 10, but really he bought 30. And he's now he's mad at you because he didn't, you didn't bring all the cars. Well, you told him. So <clears throat> when I say love the dealer, here's what I really mean. <laughs> oh. The dealer does not care about he's, you. Okay. He's finally going to tell us. Say it again. Yeah. The dealer does not care about your problem today I'm, I'm just being honest i've done it 20 my best friends are car dealers and i can promise you what i've experienced in my life in car hauling 
just where is my car? Okay, so the faster you love the dealer, which means you understand they just want their car when you told them, you told them it would be there. That's all they want. Uh, whether that's an OEM, whether that's a, a private party, whether that's a POV, whatever we decide to call it, <clears throat> that's what they want. So as a carrier, as a community, as transport, that's what I think we are. And that's why I love this show so much is because what you're, what maybe, just maybe, <laughs> we, we put together this grassroots movement. You know, Ron in the New York, Long Island, we had a meeting with him. He's got this incredible property, right? And it may not be the right location, but uh, <clears throat> what we're talking about in, in John Roberts in the live chat, Candy Seaport Service live chat, Ty, Cars on the Move live chat, how about a terminal? What, what about that? What, what do you mean? I was thinking of terminals as well. I know. Well, let's do this, man. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, what I love is, uh, you know, like like a, like a, not a ping pong ball, but a pinball bouncing around, you know, topic to topic. We got the pinball moving, so let's do this. Camera one. All right, here we go. Final drum roll. What we're going to do is we're going to bring in everybody. Let's bring in John and Joe and Dana and Ken and um we're just gonna let's crank up the party um this is the managing auto transport operations full panel tuesday night jay gets in the back seat go where do we go who wants to say something well i've never seen this group at a lot words before so that's uh that's amazing right off the bat but you know i think i think i'll go i'll i'll, I'll build on what ty just said you know because here's the thing it, the dealers there's so many different markets today and we play in all those markets and you have to understand the expectations of each one of those markets i mean you're right ty i've we got a guy we move we move his units to auction right some weeks there's 40 some weeks it's 150. And his expectation is regardless of count, they have to all be there by noon on Wednesday. Well, it's a little tough to plan ahead when, you know, I need you know, 15 trucks one week and four the next. But he doesn't care. They got to be there by noon on Wednesday. That's the end. That's not in his mind. That's not his issue. That's my issue. So we figure out ways to manage to that. And I think that that's, you know, it's something in this industry that we're, we're working towards. It's a little bit different than it has been. You know, we are having to manage to our customers' expectations more than we ever have before because the demands are much higher than they ever have before for us to perform to our promises, your point, our promises, and make the right promises, you know, Say what you do, do what you say, baby. That's what it, that's what matters. Thank you, John. Candy says transport equals limbo. <laughs> Why? Hey, John, I got a quick question for you. What? Uh, <clears throat> this has been my experience, and I know I sound kind of harsh and brash most of the time, but if I, my experience has been if I, if I provide the service that I told the dealer I would provide, I can eventually get more money out of that dealer because he trusts me, he believes in me, he knows I'll get the job done. Ty, I know you're doing it. Hey, I need another 50 bucks because or 100 bucks, whatever it is. is it, what's your experience? 100%. 100%. You, you become that trusted vendor and the performance becomes the key component and I'm not going to say pricing is irrelevant within reason, but honesty is what counts. You know, I had a dealership the other day. We're, we're moving units. Guess where? Upper East, right? And we're trying to get out of there. He says, I need these two units out before the storm hits. I said, your normal price is X. You want them before the storm hits? It's Thursday. The storm hits Friday night. The price is going to be X plus $1 million. <laughs> And, and he's like, do it, charge me what it takes, get them out of there. And that's a trusted relationship that you build with a client that he knows you're not gonna take him to the cleaners on it,
but he trusts you to get the job done when you need to get it done and deliver when you need to deliver. And that's, that's, I mean, that's the way we all need to be, right? I mean, isn't that, that's who we all want to work with when we're buying stuff. I contract a guy to build a garage. I contract a guy to, you know, clean up my fall leaves, whatever it is. I want the same thing. They want the same thing. They're human beings. Amen. Joe, what's it like? Key. Hey, Joe, what's this like? This conversation like in OEM land? Ah. Uh, uh, premium still. Yeah, premium is it, premium becomes spot buy. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's spot buy stuff in that world for sure. The the, the contract is the contract. You, you manage it what, how you can and, and go from there. But you know. Uh, you know, I, what I, I guess really the, the message isn't the same because at the end of the day, you're still, it's still a relationship thing and you're still, you know, contacting the same group of dealers. So, no, but you're, you're a hundred percent right, Joe. I mean, when you're, when you're, and I've been there, done that when you're under that contract, all, all that becomes irrelevant. You've got a price. It's X amount of price. You got X yeah. amount of trucks. You deliver an X amount of time. That's the way it works. And and right. when the OEM needs something different, they go to a spot buy market. And you know we we see those bids all the time. And they're they're contractual business somebody else holds that we don't. But we get the we get the hit. We get the email. You know I need 200 units out of this port delivered to these seven dealerships in North Carolina ASAP. What's the price? And you know we. We un have the advantage in that we get to say the price is one million dollars versus you're under contract and you don't get to say that. And it's that's the way the OEMs play that game on us. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and I can appreciate we've got different, but it's OK. It's it's all it, it, it's all right that we got new and used OEM auction dealer recovery. It's actually <laughs> It keep, I, to me, it keeps it dynamic. You know, I like a dynamic environment where I'm continually learning and trying to wrap my arms around all these parameters, which seems rather unwieldy. Yeah, well, it goes back to what Joe said earlier in the very beginning. It's a relationship business. So Joe may not have the ability to do what uh, John and I are talking about, <clears throat> but Joe does have the ability to get that contract again next time it comes up because of that relationship and I absolutely think, yeah. Yeah. and he handles the volume on a consistent basis which is what they want i mean they they want they, they need that ongoing relationship to develop that and keep it going on a consistent basis at budget that's super i mean that's key to the to the base of the business there well more than that i mean stability is the key i mean the the, the right. only are chasing after like you know if I had, if I hand you, uh, whatever, thirty thousand units a year, you 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 handle that. If I throw forty thousand at you, then I understand it's going to be a, you know malfunctions and whatever. But you know, get those thirty thousand done, and we're we're happy. I mean, uh, look look, nobody likes spot by its mess. <laughs> it creates problems. You know, people fighting over units, whatever. But. <laughs> End of the day, that's that's Joe. That has never happened. I have never picked up a VIN that was assigned to you already. That's never happened. <laughs> I, have. I have. I have. And I'm totally kidding, man. That happens all the time. It's a mess. You're absolutely right. Not only relationships, but a strong network. In the event, the uh, inevitability that you're gonna you're gonna run into a situation where you need. You need to have your trusted workers to take care of it, right? Yeah. yeah. By the way, I, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ken because I, I completely neglected in my uh, tirade about delivery to include the uh, the ambiances of picking up at a repo yard between on Tuesday between 2 and 3 o'clock <laughs> while wearing pink socks and hopping on one foot and shouting, May I please have the car, Larry? Because oh, oh. Uh, yeah, that does get very, very <laughs> complex on the pickup side. So yes. appreciate you, Ken, and what you go through there. And you know, mega dittos because I used to have a repo hammer and I retired it. Huh? 
when we the more we learn about what recovery goes through shoot man i mean that that appointment that's why we had a show with brianna last week about appointment times ken appointment times go yeah well it depends where you're at and what part of the country you're in i mean it could be every day eight to five it could be fridays three to five i mean it's really that big of a gamut um all, all the, the other bigger thing, I mean, just you know, I'm going to use the COVID excuse because that really changed the appointment things. It used to be, lots used to be manned way more than they are now. Uh, since COVID, of course, everything was just like everything else, right? It was everything was scaled back, and it's staying scaled back at this point. And it's not a problem that you want or created. No, no, they were they were pretty most you know. Most of your mainstream yards, um, you know, had full service all the time. You know, and it will come back. As the repos come back heavier, the lots will get staffed up more, which will open up the appointment windows. For sure. Right. There's just, not the, there's just not the business there now to have people there 40 hours a week. And how about just anywhere you go? Are, is everybody seeing staffing shortages where they go? Went to a pizza place. Probably waited an extra hour, yep. just because of staffing. Oh yeah. Huh? Is there is there any doubt that there is a driver hiring shortage right now? <laughs> huge, <laughs> huge, yeah, huge. Yeah, we're talking about By a the gap. Way, I mean, it, that's ridiculous. We, yeah. By the way, Joe, yeah. Joe, Midwestern Car Carriers, Kansas City, Missouri, and other places is looking for drivers. Is that right? Everywhere. 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 Good. Everywhere drivers. If you got a CDL Class A, clean, preferably, with what? Send Two it. Years? Send, Send them Midwestern Car Carriers. Jay's putting in a live chat. Yep. Send Great it. company, by the way. Hey, I wanted to throw another plug for Midwestern. Uh, I've known these guys for a long time. I've been in and out of their shop, their offices. They're great people, Randy, Ed. Uh, I want to give Joe some credit here because Joe, I watched Joe run through this office, run through the shop, run, and there, there's an energy that you can literally feel that this guy is making progress, this guy is building something, and he is on fire. And I love it. Nice. Thank you, Joe. That's really cool. Nice. I've seen it. It's live. It's real. <laughs> That's awesome. You, awesome for you to say that. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 take take everything else that I, I ever say in my life and just put it into distill it in this little bucket. Um, you know, you want to build a successful company, build a culture. Make that culture amazing. Make that culture awesome. Whatever it is, whatever the focus is, make that culture impressive. That that's the goal. You know, make 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 the culture amazing. And I think that um, that's something that we've been doing for the last you know, couple of years, anyway, is to try and really you know take the core of our values and build it into something amazing. And uh, it's been fun. Well, and, I, and Joe, I, 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 you know, I've been with the asset base guys and uh, I will tell you, I can appreciate what you're doing there, there because drivers care. I mean, they, they want yeah. that. They, they, they dig that. That's so important. So good for you, man. Kudos. Yeah, that's the key, Joe. Good job. Thank you. It's real guys. I've seen it <clears throat> and it's, it's genuine. Is I'm, I know that stuff real well, and I know it when I see it. So uh, that's my final thought. I got. I'm glad you said that because I got everybody's uh, link in the live chat. Joe's with Midwestern Car Carriers. Dana Pre-owned Auto Logistics. John Ship Your Car Now. Ken Location Services. All those links are in the live chat. If you have any further questions or need for follow up, let us know. Um. I know that I like in the spotlight we hit a lot. Um, I overall we didn't really talk that much about condition reports. I don't even know if I said it yet tonight. I'm not going to get into it. 
but you hear it a lot. It's a, I suppose that'd be a whole nother show because we we hear condition reports at every trade show we go to. And um, and what does that lead to? Vehicle inspections, which leads to who who damaged it. Number one, I didn't know where it was. Number two, I didn't do it. There's no damage in this business. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just uh, if you want condition reports, just go dispatch on Super Dispatch and get condition reports. You'll be happy. Like There's the, my plug for, like the for Ben and back in the team. Yeah. For Super Dispatch and the team. Tonight. Absolutely. It, yeah. it, they rock. They're just killing it here tonight. Um, EV. Hey, Don, I, I got, I got, I got five words for you. Don Brady, charge across America, my man, the driver. And and what did yeah? So here we go. What did Don learn the hard way about EVs? He learned that planning for charging was more important than driving, and that in 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 today's world, that's the the life of a EV driver. Now we've learned a lot of stuff about moving EVs, which that's a whole nother show. We can talk about all the aspects of moving an EV, but, but Don absolutely came off of that thing. And he said, Oh my gosh, I had no idea how much time we were going to spend figuring out miles and EV locations. It was a nightmare. The whole base of the show. Well, well now wait a minute. Fixed. Oh my God. There's, there's the show dealers across America, throw the dealer in the truck and let them find out. The driving's the easy part. It's all the planning and the crud in between. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Dealers across America? There's probably an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Joe. Um, Twelve of them. <laughs> talk about landmines autonomy. Yeah. Future show, we'll see. future show. I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> bye, Jay. <laughs> You're bye. You're Good night, us, buddy. <laughs> bye, Sue. <laughs> no, it's, uh... Oh my gosh! All right, how about uh, never seen a le it's never seen a year like that? Who said that? Me. I don't know. Joe. <laughs> and I, I mean it. This year, never seen a year like this. And the year before this, I never saw a year like that. <laughs> I never saw a year like that. So we've had three years of I've never seen a year like that. Not, oh, a, not a word of a lie. Right. One, uh, one year from day, you may have one year from today, you may have the chance to say that again. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know, listen, you know if uh, what happens? What happens if it's four? I mean, some just I don't know. Someone gets twenty four dollars. I don't know. Whatever, but. <laughs> What a mess. But I mean, really, the, the, the industry has taken radical changes in three years and in ways that none of us would have expected. I mean, really, it, it, it's been unprecedented. So whether it's OEM or something else, I mean, it, it, unprecedented. So that's all I can say. Agreed. Totally. I, I yeah. think I saw a discussion where somebody said, Unless, unless you said this, Joe, that the the word unprecedented is almost irksome. That because yeah. it's just, do you, I mean, do you get tired of saying unprecedented? I, I didn't say that. But it makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I I got a text, not in the live chat. I put it in the live chat. So I'm I'm on be on on Don's behalf. Don isn't. It's not not Don Brady, another Don. Don is asking, does it seem like the car hauling business has been dying off? Not at all. No. I don't think that hey, either. Not I at mean, all. Other than Joe's point that we're short drivers, I don't think the industry itself is is dying off. We definitely need more people in it. Yeah, so it's it's busy. It just maybe maybe it it but it keeps changing. So the, the oh, way changing the, for sure. So the way Granddaddy did it, that's dying off. I know that's yeah. not really it's not really nice when I say that, but you know, do you get tired of hearing the same thing over and over and over? Nah, no. Got to keep up with the times. 
got to keep up with the times. You got to you got to you got to pay attention. Gotta, yeah, it changes every day, right? You got to come up out of the coal mine every so often. No, Jay. Sure. That's No, but what we're talking about, well, it, okay, here's what I'm saying though. Cuz I just brought up like, you know, e-votals and craziness. All right, we don't have to get super crazy. Like I I skipped flying cars in the industry news, you saw that. We're going to skip that for now. But we're we're, you know, it's not you know, you're not moving the pinto from A to B again and again and again. Like the auctions. Look what, right? Look what happened with the auctions. Moving the car for the dealer to the auction to be sold. Maybe moving it back. What happened to that business model? That, what, 2018? Yep, Not that that changed. doesn't happen, but it's certainly changed a percentage. Well, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, the industry model changed into who was controlling the move of those vehicles quite a bit back then. So it, it really, I mean, there's a, a big flip-flop. I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember setting up my booth in the lane at Mannheim to catch the dealers as they came out of the buying lane. There we go. And, and yeah, collect their tickets, old. right? There we go. I, mean, there's, yeah. I haven't been to an auction in years, but I'll bet there's nobody in that lane anymore. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Who is still ratcheting up the budget of getting the spot at the auction to catch the dealers coming off the lanes? Yep. Yeah, that's really going to depend Not on happening. the auction. And when was that budget a big deal? Five years ago? There we go. Three. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say five, five-ish. I used to send teams out all over the states. We used to, I'd have people in, you know, six lanes at a time all over the U.S. Two people at a booth. What, like in the 70s? No, yeah, five yeah. years ago, <laughs> right? That's the point. It's crazy. No. <laughs> Ty actually took me. I Remember that? Ty, you took me to an auction and we saw that. I actually said, it's not a myth. Land is not a myth. We had three-part carbon copies, Jay. We were filling them out and ripping off the yellow one off the back and handing it to the dealer. <laughs> John, I John, I don't know how we missed this when I met you the very first time in Vegas, but now I understand why I like you so much. <laughs> You've done everything I've done times two, so that's that's impressive. I can't wait Some... to see you again because I'm going to hug you like this, Come here. <laughs> like that. That's amazing. Hey, sometimes, sometimes I was looking forward to that one, John. Some, yeah, I wait. <laughs> well, well, boy, we all can't wait for that. Yeah, we so, got to get it on film. That's how but we no. know. If you don't well, know what Golden slow, Rod so I won't is, be able to run real fast, but uh, you, you'll probably catch me. Golden Rod, you got to yell <laughs> Golden Rod. Golden no. Rod. Well, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know I saw a Jack Cooper two, two Jack Cooper trucks hauling John Deere. ATU TVs loaded. So I don't know what that's about, but I just want everybody to know I saw it. <laughs> that fit right in there perfect, didn't it? Oh, it <laughs> yeah. slid right, just like I do. Just slide it right in there. There it is. You want to talk about it? Yeah. I now, love it. Well, the point, here's the point. Yeah. There's, and I can't, I mean, I'm telling you guys, yeah, I, I, I could sit here and bounce all over this room for four hours. I'm so jacked right now. Of what's happening in our industry real time, real time. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing it. I'm talking to him. I'm touching it. It is really happening. And it's crazy. I mean, John, all you, everybody on here, they, you guys know. T tell me if I'm wrong. Ty, you're stupid. Nothing's happening. Yeah, right. Oh. Half the news was EV, Ty. Yeah. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just telling you. There's real things that are really happening that are really changing. And the more I learn hanging out with weird people from different countries and I'm seeing this and talking to them, making these relationships, I'm telling you, what there's something happening right now. It's crazy. I know, Ty, calm down. You get too excited about change. I don't know. Well, there's two kinds of people, Ty. Those that get excited about it and those that get scared. And right now in this industry, those that get excited about it are going to come out on top. Yep. Wow. Man. That was like, knock it out of the park. Man, he, he makes fortune <laughs> cookies at night. 
Anyway, I'm, uh, that was all great. right, all right. So here we are. We're in the final moment. Camera one. If you're just joining us now, so actually, I see someone just joined. Ants? Le- is ants late? No. Um, final thoughts. I like to do final thoughts as our final chance to touch upon, and just like the you know the teacher calls the, you know somebody in the back of the room, who's who's who's. Who's sitting in the back of the room trying to pretend they're not here? Who's doing that? Who's gonna? Who's taking the microphone? I'm handing it to Ken or Dana. Ken or Dana's taking the mic. All right, here you go. Okay, let me, awesome. let me tell you yeah. about congestion reports. He brought that up super quick. I mean, you transport got to really protect yourself. Repo agents have 50 pictures on the car, very detailed rep, uh, uh, condition report, and so do auctions. You're picking up a repo agents or auctions. Your drivers better do a condition report because there's a lot of backup behind it. Throw oh. down. I didn't know I, that. 50. Yeah, money. Money. Oh. Yep. Got to stop that damage. Yep. We, we never get the condition report when there's damage. The, the driver didn't take pictures that day. It's the only day he didn't take pictures, the day he damaged the car. How frustrating is it? Whereas, like Darren says, he takes video, not even inside of an app, just on his phone. That's a great know. driver right there. That's I know, a great isn't driver. it? Yep. Amazing. How yep. do we get that word out? Super Dispatch. Get them all signed up on Super Dispatch. Man. Great transparency. There it is. Boom. Agreed. Joe, final thoughts? And go back integrity as a driver, as a company, whatever, whatever level you're well, whatever level you're at, keep your integrity solid. The rest of it will work itself out. This business will work itself through whatever we're dealing with now. Just do the right thing. John, final thoughts. Well, my first final thought was going to be get on the bus or by default, you're in front of it. But I'm going to back that up with 110% agreeing with Joe, integrity, transparency, honesty, reality. Do what you say, say what you do, period. End of story. You'll, you'll come out on top. Totally agree with Joe. Communicate Six. through the expectations. Mm-hmm. If the general chose chicken isn't going to be ready, come out of the kitchen and say something. That's it. Treat people like the like you want to be treated. Right? If you, if you like information, give information. All right. Well, I know. I mean, that's the it comes back to where's my car? <laughs> right? I'll be there tomorrow. It'll be. Can't, so then the question, next one, well, can I see it? Can I see it right now? Be there tomorrow with a free beer. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's better. You had me. But are we Are we at the point where we can show them where the car is now? Can we do that? Are we not there yet? Don't they expect that? They have it, but that hurts too. I mean, it, it's not re- it, Yeah, it's not relevant yet. Yeah, I mean, where the car is now in relation to when it's going to get there is, those are two dynamically different questions. So I don't know if they're, I don't know if we're ready to go there yet. Yeah, well, that's what, which is why it seems to be we see it get asked more and more. But we're going to keep asking these questions and uh, and talking about it, gentlemen. I thank you for tonight's show. That was an awesome show. So thank you so much. For your time and participation really looking forward to it and i think this thank you helps Jay. a lot moving to the next stage which is car conference in march so thank you looking forward to it sounds good guys okay all right thanks, thanks guys Jay. i'm looking forward to that big hug ty i'm ready you're ready <laughs> i'm a hugger golden thanks, rod Bye, <laughs> thanks, thanks, you again. all right guys have a great all night, right, good night. Easy. thank you very much all right and there's the end of the meeting. Let them go. And wow, awesome stuff. Really, Carlos? 
Hey, what's up, Carlos? Let's try that again. That wasn't fair. Auto Transport Intel saying hi to Carlos. Take two. Hey, what's up, Carlos? Repo Ryan, Ron, William, Gary, Super Dispatch, Ants, Candy. Thank you guys so much for taking the time on a Tuesday night. Um, it was an awesome conversation. Um, shout out and thank you to Mark Grodeke and Ty and uh, Hendrick, Super Dispatch, Chris, Ron, all the Super Chats. Thank you so much for those contributions. Thank you, ACV, Superflow Systems, Murphy Auto Transport, Black Widow Imaging, and a special thanks to uh, Midwestern Car Carers, Pre-Owned Auto Logistics, Ship Your Car Now, Location Services for the time, the participation. Really looking forward to uh, bringing back. Now, Ken was filling in for Jose. Did an amazing job. Thank you so much, Ken. Uh, but we will have uh, Dana, John, Joe, and Jose all together again at Car Conference in Vegas at the end of March. And so we're working way up to uh, the best darn transportation and logistics panel we can muster. That ought to be the name of it. That'll fit on the billboard. Can we get that? Uh, and thank you so much for being in the live chat and... Uh, Man, it's awesome. It's incredible. I love it. Every Tuesday night. Tuesday night is a special... I'm not going to say it's my favorite. Well, I, but, I mean, I love it. I love Tuesday nights. It's how the channel's kind of started. It's what really gave it new life and momentum. Um, the other the other shows are great, though. If you haven't... If you're not tuning in on Wednesdays, DOT compliance is really more for uh, newer carriers or if you're facing a problem situation... A regulation you don't know how to manage. Do tune into DOT compliance. Dispatching live is just fun. If you are, you know, if something's bugging you, tune in for dispatching live um, because man, we really get into the expectations. I mean, there's almost nothing more frustrating than the uh, the wrestling ring of random stuff on the load boards. What goes on there is insane. Uh, and then Fridays, if you've had enough. Join us on Fridays for uh, Cars on the Move, where we connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. And we talk about appreciation in the industry and how the community helps each other. Um, so thank you so much for being a part of it. Let us know how we can help you. Don't forget to go to autotransportintel.com and click on sign up. Become an ATI insider. Get on the email blast at minimum. You want the email blast so you know what's happening on Tuesday night's show. As you've seen... Um, Thank you. That's really very nice. I appreciate that. As you've seen, uh, oh, what in the world? Uh, these Tuesday night shows, we we are we're, I think we're we're we're, gosh, I don't know. I don't even know how to say this in a nice humble way, other than we're doing something here, and I love it, and we're here together, and it's a community, and it's information, and we're at the forefront of change. We're we're now if if we're a surfer, we're on that. I don't know. I don't know surfing very well, so I'm going to stay out of the surfing analogies. But we are riding the wave, my friends. So thank you for riding it with me. I sure do appreciate it. Uh, watch out for the groundhog tomorrow. <laughs> and watch out for the weather. Stay safe. Drive safe. Be safe. Stay warm. Park it. And uh, get some breakfast. And some hot coffee. And, um, and let us know what we can do to help. So send it in. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Here comes the car hauler. Thank you so much. Peace out, everybody, and good night.